Okay, well, um, I think I'll start. So, uh, hi everybody, I'm Alex Bradbury. Uh, so I've been working with the foundation since we first had hardware. Uh, so I've mostly, most of the talks I've done so far, I've been talking about the, um, the SD card images or the Linux work which I do, but I'm taking a bit of a different tack today and talking about some of the things I've been involved in, in terms of helping teachers to deploy Raspberry Pis into their schools because basically there's, uh, so we're getting to a point now where people like Carrie Ann, we were talking about this morning about her Sonic Pi project, are looking to uh, take Raspberry Pis into their schools, but then they have problems with managing them, dealing with updates, and I'll sort of go through uh, the solutions which we have so far. So I should sort of say ahead of time, these aren't all things which are all packaged up. It's more just a, you know, a heads up that you know, if you have these problems, these potential solutions are here or are in development works and, you know, sort of an advert to, you know, come and speak to me if you have anything that you want to contribute or if anything's uh, giving you issues or if you want to help prioritize things. <coughs> so, as I say, the basic problem is, you know, you're, you've got a classroom full of Raspberry Pis or it's an after school club or, you know, you know any, anything which involves managing Raspberry Pis and what do you do from there? So the first problem is, you know, all of a sudden you've got to do 30 SD cards, right? Because the, you could have them pre, you could, you could, you could order them directly pre-flashed from CPC or Farnell or whoever, but uh, at some point you may want to update to a later distribution and something may go wrong. So you really need a system in place for you to be able to uh, write them and update them. And this is actually far easier than you might think. All you need is uh, a few USB hubs and uh, some SD card writers and a little script. So I've got something called uh, Super Duper, which I'll stick up on my GitHub um, at some point. So that's under Linux. But uh, if anybody is itching for a project, something under Windows would be equally easy. So this is very fun. It's all it's just a bunch of hubs. I think it does 10 at a time and does pretty blinking lights as it, as it writes each one and then verifies that they're done. Uh, we sort of end up having to do this when, so I, I did that back in the early days when we were sending out SD cards to press for the initial release as, yeah, writing one at a time did not scale in the slightest. <coughs> now, another, so I suppose, uh, I'm sort of, one reason I'm talking about this is that a lot of the tools that, or techniques that we use internally when we're coming up with new SD card images or trying to, uh, well, yes, generally working on the distribution could be used quite easily for other purposes, such as in the classroom, customizing to your purposes, or if you're looking to deploy a Raspberry Pi for a, you know, a single use sort of thing, if it's in a kiosk or in a, in a museum. So I've got a bunch of scripts which are called uh, Spindle, and this is a, uh, basically it's a system which, which we use to generate the Raspberry Pi SD card images, so the Raspbian and the standard Debian images which you get on the downloads page. And it's an environment which emulates a Raspberry Pi and uh, through a series of scripts it customizes it. So uh, the way that you'd be able to use this is download it, um, run it on your system, and if for instance you'll want to teach uh, something whereby you need certain software pre-installed, you can customize the setup steps. And the advantage of doing this versus just doing it on a Pi, then taking a copy of that SD card image, is that if you script those steps, then it can be reproducible at a later date. So if you want to make a small change, you don't have to go back from a start and then redo all your changes. Uh, so right now, again, that's, um, yeah, it is, it's actually something which I'm hoping to get done over the next uh, few days or a week or so to make it so it's easier for people other than myself to run it. Um, there's a few issues on, uh, Linux versions, but the good news is I also have a clear path for uh, getting it running on Windows as well, so it should be very easy to uh, st start this up, uh, go into a Raspberry Pi-like environment, um, edit some scripts to customize the building of that image, and away you go. Uh, so this would, another case would be useful if you have some sort of custom network configuration at your school. And yeah, basically I'll be updating um, on that on uh, my Twitter feed or probably my website as well. <clears throat> now, Sonic Pi was something which Carrie Ann spoke about earlier, and this is this has been my main uh, exposure to the whole issue of how to uh, manage Pies when they're in the classroom, because there's all these problems which 
uh, I mean, we had considered, but we hadn't really tried to, we hadn't had a chance to work on solutions until we had some clear requirements. So in this case, there was um, all the computers in carry the, the Raspberry Pis in carry Ann's classroom, they're uh, put away at the end of a lesson, they're put in a cupboard somewhere, they're taken out later, they're never connected to a school network, so a lot of the solutions with regarding to backing up the users uh, while the children's work or handling updates becomes rather more difficult. Um, so yeah, this isn't an area where I have lots of ready to go solutions right now, um, but certainly is the sort of thing where if you're a teacher and you're stuck and you come to something like a Raspberry Jam and you speak to people who are developers, um, they will be very eager to help you come up with solutions. For instance, a problem of backing up the children's SD card, uh, children's work. One way would be to take the SD cards in at the end of the day and then um, plug them into an SD card reader. Um, but we could also just have a script running on the Raspberry Pi which recognizes the teacher's USB memory stick and they just go around the classroom, stick it in two seconds, pull it out again, and the work's been backed up. Uh, but other than, other than the issues of actually backing up the, backing up the work, the Pi's worked out pretty well um, thus far, as uh, Carrie Ann can talk to you about later. I think the main, there's been a few issues with SD card corruption, um, which happens every now and again, but in a class, when you have two classes working several times a week who are pulling the power leads at uh, inopportune moments, that sort of thing is going to happen at, at some point. <coughs> And yeah, that's sort of the conclusion for the uh, talk aspect, I suppose. I focused mainly on the actual software problems. So if you are looking to, uh, well, if, if, so there are a whole bunch of other things which teachers looking to deploy Raspberry Pis will run into, uh, dealing with power, getting it onto school network, working with the network administrators and so on. Um, monitors can be an issue. And as I say, much of this is very much a, a work in progress. So I'm you know, looking to hear from you know, what problems you've been facing or if you've already managed a large number of pies, what solutions you've been using to try and, um, to try and help you. And I should also mention that uh, Paul Hallett, the Django Pi, uh, who is speaking later, he's been telling me about his dissertation project at university, which helps to deal with some of the issues I talked about earlier to do with dealing with updates and customizing the Raspberry Pi images for certain uses. So hopefully it will make that work public at some point. And I think the real way forward with uh, all of this stuff in general is if teachers who are using Raspberry Pis in these contexts start to uh, share experiences, build up uh, best practices so that we can identify what problems are there and which problems remain unsolved and also share best practices for things which, you know, which have already been solved by the community and hopefully you know, integrate those, make them easier for other people to use. And yep, I think I'll end it there and I think we do have time for questions if anybody has any questions right now. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions at all? Yep. Yeah. Uh, one situation I've encountered is yep. I've used various Raspberry Pis and various SD uh, various cards. Yep. When it's, I've had occasion where I've had everything on one card and getting onto another card at the same size has been a real problem because it's expanded. Uh, I've expanded the partition size to mm. the card. Yep. And the other card I bought, even though it might say eight gigabytes, doesn't have that space on it. So. I'm having to go to a 16 gigabyte card. Mm. The same happens again. So it's definitely a bit of a frustration now. Yeah. But other than that, it's fine. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good point. It's, um, yeah, so that could be fixable by either expanding to something a bit below the maximum limit, because as you say, there's a slight variance in the actual length, or indeed having tools which you know, help you deal with that problem and maybe downsize the original card. Yep. Uh, having a box of Raspberry Pis that you loan out. Sorry, having a box of Raspberry Pis that you loan out to schools or mm -hmm. you use in the, use in, use in the classroom, is uh, is difficult. What, what are the options for sort of having a box of Raspberry Pis with all the peripherals and all the you know cables and stuff? Sorry, in what way is it difficult? So, well, so we've got a we've we've got a box of thirty Raspberry Pis yep. that we we we've bought just to loan out to schools, mm -hmm. and the problem is 
how do we package that in a sensible way, physical packaging? So how do we package it so that, you know, for example, at the end of the lesson, yeah. you make sure you've got all those 30 Raspberry Pis back with all the 30 sets of all the peripherals you've got with it? Um, yeah, I agree. That is uh, perhaps there's an opportunity there for somebody to come up with a um, with a solution. I mean, I sorry, a slightly larger. So there we go. Someone's come up with a solution already. Innovation. Yeah. Maybe? Anybody has any? No? Great. Thanks very much, Ben. Thank you.